Welcome to Lecture 6 for CED 405 Spiritual Formations. Today's lecture is going to be on the Great Commission. The introduction to today's note says, After the resurrection of Christ and before his ascension, Jesus left his disciples with a command that would become the mission of all Christianity and the church. This command has become known as the Great Commission. The purpose of this lesson is, is to understand the principle of making a disciple and how to accomplish it. Now, in order to be able to understand how to fulfill the Great Commission, we must first answer the question, what is the Great Commission? Letter A. The most detailed recording of the Great Commission is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. While all four gospel accounts record some variation of the Great Commission, Matthew gives us the most detail. In chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, Matthew recorded that the Lord Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Interestingly, letter B, there is only one imperative verb or command in the Great Commission. While in the English, it may appear that there are two commands, go and make disciples, there is actually only one imperative verb used in the Greek, and that word is mathetusate, which means to make disciples. So then, Roman numeral two, what is a disciple? Letter A, the definition of a disciple is a pupil or a learner. Number one, the background of discipleship is deeply rooted in the Jewish culture. There were three rabbinical schools a boy could attend in order to become a disciple of a rabbi and hopefully one day a rabbi himself. The first was called Bet Sefer. In the Hebrew, the word Bet means house and Sefer means scrolls. Therefore, Bet Sefer became known as the house of scrolls. When some Jewish boys or girls reached the age of six years old, they would begin their schooling in the temple or synagogue. This education would continue until he or she was 12 years of age. While at the House of Scrolls or Bet Sefer, the children would learn to read, study, and memorize the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. As a child of six, one would go to the synagogue and the most respected man in the city would greet each child with a slate, a dollop of honey on the slate, and then take out the most ancient scroll of the Torah. As these children sat speechless and in awe, the rabbi would have them taste the honey on their slate and tell them that the Torah was sweeter than the honeycomb, quoting Psalm 19, verse 10. Then the secondary school for discipleship was known as Bet Talmud, or House of Learning. After Bet Sefer, some select boys would then continue in their education at this institute until they were 15 years of age. While here, they would study and memorize the rest of the Old Testament, as well as learn their family trade, since even most rabbis had another job that would earn them income. And lastly, letter C, the final school for discipleship was known as Bet Midrash, or the House of Interpretation. In order to be accepted into this level of education, a student would have to approach or be approached by a rabbi. The rabbi would then question the potential pupil 
in order to determine if he could be like that rabbi. Those who passed would hear the rabbi say, Come, follow me. But those who failed would hear him say, Depart from me to do your family trade. From the ages of 16 to 30 years old, the best of the best would become a disciple of a rabbi to receive on-the-job training to one day become a rabbi himself and have his own disciples. But thankfully, number two, Jesus has called us to be disciples upon salvation. This means that the Lord sees us as good enough to follow him and learn his ways. Finally, Roman numeral three, now that we know what the Great Commission is and what it means to be a disciple, how do we accomplish our Great Commission? Letter A, it starts first by going. The beginning of Matthew 28 verse 19 says, Go therefore and make disciples. The word go is translated from the Greek verb paruthentis. This word, while not translated as such, is actually a participle in the Greek that means to go or going. Since this verb is in the aorist tense, then it could be translated, having gone, make disciples. And this would refer to an action either prior to or coinciding with the imperative to make disciples. So this gives the connotation that Jesus wanted the disciples to first accomplish this mission by going out with a purpose. In other words, one cannot make disciples if he or she is not intentional about it. They will not just come to us. We must go to them. And then secondly, this is accomplished by baptizing those new disciples of Christ. Matthew 28, 19 says, Having gone, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word transliterated baptize is baptizantes, which means to immerse. This part of the discipleship process demonstrates commitment to Christ by being immersed into his teachings and his order. This is not supposed to be just some flippant thing an individual does at the end of a church service on a Sunday. This is the way for someone to publicly declare that they are no longer following after themselves their flesh, or their previous religion, but now turning to a new leader, and that leader is Jesus Christ. And the final way to accomplish the Great Commission is by teaching the new disciple. Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 says, Having gone, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or obey everything I have commanded you. The Greek participle here that's translated teaching is didaskantes, which means to instruct. But thankfully, the disciple is not told to be instructed all things by the teacher, but is instead told to be instructed to observe or obey all that Christ has commanded them. Neither you nor I would be able to teach a new disciple everything about Jesus, but we can teach them to get into the word of God themselves and when they run into a command by the Lord Jesus to listen to it, to observe it, and to obey it. Well, that brings us to the end of Lecture 9 for CED 405 Spiritual Formations.